In this lesson, you'll learn about framing your shots. We'll start with a look at what framing is, and then we'll look at framing in theory, including rule of thirds positioning, head, look, and lead room, and the various shot types and when to use them. And then we'll look at framing in practice, how to apply these rules to several real-world situations involving one speaker and two speakers. What is framing? Framing is where you place the subject in the frame. And it's minding established rules regarding how and where to put the subjects in the frames because if you ignore the rules, the video doesn't look optimal to your viewers. The audience may not know about the rule of thirds, but they know that this looks a lot more appropriate than this. So let's jump into our framing rule, starting with the rule of thirds. So the rule of thirds places your eyes about the top third of the frame, as we see here in the CNN shot. And if you're looking at the camera, you want the speaker to be placed in the middle of the frame. Now, if you're framing a two shot in this case, you want both speakers to have their eyes right around top third of the frame so they look equally framed in the video. And since they're both looking at directly at the camera, you wanna place them both in the middle. And this makes it very easy to combine these two shots that were obviously shot very far away into a single shot that looks very professional and very uniform. Now let's look at headroom. And simply stated, in all the shots that we're going to be considering for live business video, you never want to cut off the speaker's head. So that's the rule of headroom is, hey, don't cut off the speaker's head. Look room basically says that when the subject isn't facing directly towards the camera, in this case he's facing the audience, you want to place him in the back third of the frame, which leaves look room over here. And you want to try and position the subject in the appropriate intersection. When I say the subject, I mean the subject's eyes. So if this was perfect, maybe he would be a little bit lower and a little bit over here, but this is probably close enough for a quick shot at a TED Talk. This is an ESPN video. We've got Peyton Manning over here, Ronnie Lott over here, and because he's looking this way instead of at the camera, we're placing him close to this intersection. And of course, with Peyton Manning, it's absolutely perfect, which is what you'd expect. So when the subject isn't facing the camera, leave look room in the direction that he's facing or she's facing and try and position the eyes at this intersection or this intersection, depending upon which side they're looking towards. And then lead room is kind of the same thing. When a person is walking in one direction, in this particular example, Miss Gilbert is walking this way, you want to try and leave space in the front for in the direction that she's walking. And from a positioning perspective, again, you try and place her eyes here, but it's very difficult to do when somebody's basically pacing around on stage. You just want to make sure that you get the, the lead room up here. Now let's look at the classic shots you'll use when shooting both live and on-demand video. And I'm going to cover the ones that are most used in a business-oriented setting. You're probably not going to use a lot of extreme close-ups. So MCU is medium close-up. This is armpits up and excludes the arms. So this is a medium close-up here, and we see the armpits here. And it's a good all-purpose shot for any type of shoot, whether it's postage stamp or whether it's full screen. Medium shot is waist up. Full shot is feet to top of head. And then what I'll call weekend update medium shot, and you'll see why in a moment, is elbows up. And it turns out that this is a very popular shot in streaming, though it's not shown in this shot guide. Okay, let's start to apply these shots to the different types of scenarios that we find ourselves in. So this is a postage stamp webinar. This is a go-to webinar webinar. And in this particular case, I would use a medium close-up and I would stay with the medium close-up. I wouldn't go any closer in, but I wouldn't go any further out. What about if I'm a single speaker and instead of postage stamp, I'm going full screen? Well, this is where we get our weekend update medium shot. So in the classic shots, we went from medium shot, which was a waist shot, to medium close-up, which was armpits and up. But it turns out that there's a lot of shots that show the elbow up. And that's what we're seeing here. And this is obviously weekend update. This is Golf Channel, elbows up. This is from a video that um, Jadel Bunchen did with Anderson Cooper on health. And we see again, armpits here, elbows here. So the shot is really the, you know, again, I'm calling it the weekend update medium shot. And then back to weekend update. This shot is a medium close up. We, we talked about the head before. This shot looks a little bit too close to me. If I'm gonna be showing this video full screen, I really don't wanna see that much of this guy. I'd really prefer something a little bit further away, perhaps even the medium shot we'll see in a moment. So here's shot usage, single speaker, sitting or standing still. This is the medium close-up. It's a little bit towards the weekend update. Here's the armpits, 
we're not seeing the elbows, so that's pretty close. Same thing, a little bit further down than you'd normally see, but it's a, it's a medium close-up. That's the closest I'd want to go. And then you also see the medium shot frequently used. And I almost prefer this for a full screen video from somebody sitting. And then sometimes you may want to zoom out to, I'll call this a full shot. You can't see his feet, but they probably would be right around here. So if you're going to be switching shots during the event, either because you want to move the camera around or because you have multiple cameras, one should be a medium shot, one should be a medium close-up, and then every once in a while you want to go to the full shot. And we'll see a, a few examples of that during this discussion. So this is a shot usage speaker standing, multiple shots. So this is the long shot. This is feet to head to establish the perspective, to kind of let us know where she is, and then move in to the weekend update medium shot. Again, we're seeing her elbows here. It's not an armpits to head, it's an elbow to head shot. And then if there's a single camera, then you might want to zoom in and out. If it's multiple cameras, you may want to switch from one to the other. Same thing with Bill Maher. We start with a long shot to establish a perspective, let us know where he is in his room. We cut to the medium shot, waist up, and this is where we stay mostly for this monologue. Every once in a while, we'll jump back to a long shot, again, just to switch things up for the audience and to give perspective as to where Mar is in his discussion. Again, if it's a single camera, consider zooming in and out. Multiple cameras, you can switch from one another. Now, if you look at a TED Talk, you see that they switch shots pretty frequently. This is the full shot, the long shot, that covers, you know, feet to head. This is the medium shot where they tend to spend most of their time. And this is the weekend update medium shot where it's elbows to head, where it seems like they spend most of their time. And I think this is these two are the most useful shots for me. This is good for varying the shot, providing perspective of the audience, looking, you know, getting a look at the stage. But I like these two shots better. Same thing here for another TED Talk, long shot, medium shot, medium close up, armpits to top of head. And again, this is a bit too close for me. If I'm viewing this full screen, I don't really want to be that close to this guy's face. So how do things change when you've got two people sharing the screen? If you're both using webcams, then you're pretty much stuck on a medium close up because it's really tough to go further back than this. On the other hand, if you're using cameras, as we see here with the sports talk video, you can use, this is a bit further away than a medium close up, not quite a weekend update, but it's, it's further away than a medium close up. And this looks good. You can also go weekend update. And this is a video that I shot with a standalone camera at uh, NAB in 2019. This is a similar framing for another sports talk video where you can see the elbows down here. These are weekend update shots. And then here's a medium shot of myself and Real Network's founder, Rob Glazier, that I think works well. This was shot at Streaming Media East in 2019. And if I had to pick one framing for this type of shot, it would either be this with a medium shot or this with a weekend update. And actually, I think this looks a little bit better. That's that's close enough for the audience to see what they need to see without being too close. And I'm going to summarize these recommendations at the end of the lesson, so don't feel like you need to write them down. wanted to cover another set of scenarios where we have two speakers sitting casually. And typically here, you're going to start with the full shot of both, whether you're single camera or multiple cameras. And then you're going to want to go to close-ups for both of these speakers. And here we see a weekend update medium shot where we're at his elbows but there's no look room. And he's pretty much facing the camera. The chairs aren't facing each other that directly. And he's facing the camera, not her. So perhaps that's appropriate in this case. We'll look at some other instances where it's not. And this is Giselle and Anderson Cooper. We see the full shot of both. By full shot, I mean shoes to top of head. Pretty comfortable shot there. And then we get to a weekend update medium shot. He's a little bit back in the frame. You could say there was some look room here. She's not. She's right in the center of the frame, even though she's looking off at Anderson over here. So in this case, I would probably move her to this position over here to maintain the look room that I think is appropriate when you're not staring directly at the camera. Here's another example, Captain Tom from a few years ago. Here's a full shot of both. And here is look room. He's looking at her, not looking directly at the camera. And here's her looking at him, not directly at the camera. And we see the look room that places her in the back part of the frame. So here are the promised rules. And if I've got a single speaker and I'm in a postage stamp, so here's the video size, it's gonna be tiny. If you have to pick one shot and stay there, 
it would be the medium close-up, armpits to the top of head. And I wouldn't change this. If I'm in a webinar and I'm in that tiny of a window, I just don't change it. If I'm a single person and I'm seated or in a podium, you're going to be positioned potentially in the full video window if the person watching zooms it up that big. I would use a medium shot if I had to pick one shot and stay there. If I could change shots, either because I was going to zoom in and out with my camera or had multiple cameras, I would go between a medium shot and a weekend update medium shot. And then look room always if you're not looking at the camera and lead room shouldn't be any because you're either seated or at a podium. And then this is the TED Talk scenario. Again, full video window. The If I had to pick one shot and stay there, I would use the medium shot. If I could either use multiple cameras or zoom in and out, I would rotate between a medium shot, a weekend update medium shot, wouldn't get any closer than this, and a long shot just to show the entire stage and to retain viewer interest. Look room, if not looking at the camera, always, and lead room if they're walking around, always. This is two speakers. Postage stamp, you know, you shouldn't do a postage stamp and two speakers because there's no way to see them. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use this combination at all. If it's a formal business interview close in, like we saw at NAB or Streaming Media East, and it's going to be shown in a full video window, if I had to pick one shot and stay there, it would be a medium shot of both participants. And if I could change shots, I would go from a medium shot to a weekend update medium shot. And always lose look room if we're not looking at the camera and I'm sitting down so there's no lead room. Informal interview, this is the Giselle and Anderson Cooper scenario. It's, if it's going to be shown in a full video window, if I had to stay in one shot, it would be a medium shot of both of them, but that may not be possible. They may be too far away. Um, if I needed to stay in one shot, I'd, I'd do the smallest possible shot that contained them both. And then if I could alternate shots or change shots, I'd go from a medium shot to a weekend update medium shot, no closer than this. And then long shots again at the start and infrequently during the discussion just to kind of retain viewer interest with a different camera angle. I would always use look room if they're not looking directly at the camera. And if they were moving around, I would always use lead room. And let me leave you with a couple of final thoughts. First, whenever you're framing a subject, use a classic position, otherwise it's going to look very awkward. And that's the whole point of this lesson. Second, aim for fast proximity to the classic framing. And once you're there, stop and hold. Don't continually adjust until it's perfect. So this shot has good look room here. Ideally, you'd have the subject's eyes right here at this intersection. From my perspective, this is good enough. I wouldn't use minute adjustments to try and get his eyes here because really the audience isn't going to notice the difference and the motion could be irritating. So try to get close fast and then just leave it. 